Hey guys, it's Bianca here, and today we're going to be talking about the French painter Henri Julien Philippe Sousa. So basically, his deal is he was a French impressionist painter. He was also known as La Dunier, which translates to custom officers in English, as that was his main career in life. Despite being ridiculed throughout his life, he came to be recognized as a self taught artist whose works are considered to be of high artistic quality, despite having amateur like characteristics. So basically, with Rousseau, he was born in Laval which is located in northern France, in the year of 1844. And he went to Laval High School, and there he discovered he was good at drawing. But that was the only thing he was good at. So, like, he wasn't really into the school thing. Here, in the self-portrait, we see how he captured how he aspired to be a painter, presenting himself in an outside scale. And you see the, how he's holding the brush and the palette at hand. But he's also wearing a suit and a traditional artist beret. He stands as a subject himself in a landscape in Paris that features a tall master ship decorated with world flags. This could represent how, despite joining the army, he never actually got to leave the country of France. And that's something he really wanted to do. After Rousseau had left school, he began working for a solicitor. But due to being in desperate need of money, him and his friends decided it would be a good idea to go steal some money. But, you know, that did not work, so he ended up in jail for a whole month. However, he did not want to go without a fight, and he tried to avoid going to jail, because, you know, who wants to go to jail for a whole month? Um, yeah, no one. So he decided to join the army, but, you know, they still made him serve the month, and he joined the army after that. One thing what I really like about Rousseau is, despite never being able to leave France, when he was painting, he could imagine himself in a different part of the world, and distort the reality in front of him that served as inspiration for his pieces. He's completely self-taught, as he's never been to any art college or institution, so he was never taught any proper art techniques, you know? He paints as he pleases, and it results in work that both has a naive and charming characteristic to it. And that's what I like about him, you know? He just paints because it's something he wants to do. It's not something he has to do, and he has a job completely and a life completely separate from that. So he has a so passion. You see, this painting here is called Surprise, Tiger in a Tropical Storm. And... It's currently hung up in a national gallery in London. So there's familiarity to the tiger as it's copied from a picture book. You know, Russo got kind of lazy, stole his inspiration, but at least it turned it into something. The painting itself was judged, you know, for its amateur like quality by critics, but it was also adored by critics for the same reason. So I guess another man's trash is another man's treasure. I mean, if you were to look at the detail, you would see that the grass that the tiger is standing on top of isn't bent in the picture. That would indicate that the grass is strong enough to hold at least a 400 pound tiger. And I don't think that, due to laws of physics, that's scientifically possible. Another piece by Russo was Scout Attacked by a Tiger. What you'll notice about this piece is Russo used similar ideas to the previous piece. One important detail in particular is the tiger. Essentially what Russo did was take the tiger and copy the mirror image and flip it. He did this because he had limited art knowledge, never really studied art. So that's actually really clever. Russo decided also on consistently portraying animals from either the front point of view or the side because he didn't really know how to portray animals from different angles. So that makes sense, you know, he kind of Makes sense, but what you know. What you notice by looking at this piece is the various shades of green. As you know, he wants to depict a lot of plant life in the photo. The different shades of green add different dimensions to the photo. And as you can see, the tiger is facing from the side point of view. And the scout that it's attacking is also facing from the side point of view. And you notice the similar details of the grass, how it is not really bending and it's supporting another tiger. Moving along, we have this piece called The Snake Charmer. So basically what inspired Russo for this piece was hearing a woman's experiences in India. As Russo wanted to travel but never got the chance to, he's going to want to learn as much as he can about other cultures. So as you can see, the main figure depicted in the piece is a mysterious dark figure. And the only thing noticeable about the figure is a glowing pair of eyes. And somehow, I could see this figure representing how Russo doesn't have knowledge of the Indian culture. It's mysterious to him, much as the world is mysterious to him, but he wants to get to know it, you know? And honestly, 
I like how, due to his lack of technique, the stillness of the work. The odd stillness of the work actually seems appropriate here, as if the flute that the figure is playing is actually holding the world in a trance as it's charming the snakes. And further paying attention to the various former elements of the composition, you see that it's a symmetrical piece overall. And the use of the bright colors is what makes the piece appealing. And obviously the green. The varying shades of green. There has to be at least 22 shades. Come on. It's overall a good piece. Here in the painting the dream is the surreal depiction of a nude woman reclining on a sofa in what appears to be a forest. The woman herself is surrounded by colorful plant life and greenery, as animals of the forest actually make eye contact with the viewer. Brusa had only been to the gardens in Paris, and never to an actual jungle, but he knew that plant life grew big in the jungle, so of course he's going to paint all the grass and the plants in the painting big, so he just exaggerates them, you know? Some of these are just simply houseplants, just exaggerated, blowing up. Honestly, this would be my favorite piece, because of the bright colors and vivid details found in the painting. And honestly, just the overall mood of the painting it depicts a mood of relaxation for the viewer. Like, the woman's really just enjoying herself. It's like she's enjoying herself in her garden in her backyard. It's a perfect mood for right now in quarantine. We can see ourselves being the lady right now in quarantine, you know? In this final piece by Ursa, Tropical Forest with Monkeys, you see a bunch of monkeys surrounded by plant life, in what appears to be what Russo thought to be a jungle. Now, Russo claimed that the animals he depicted in his pieces were based off animals he had seen in other countries, but we discovered that he's never left the country. In reality, he just spent a lot of time with the zoos inside Paris. In this piece, you see five monkeys facing the viewer. And... You see, an element important to this piece is repetition. Russo must have just used only like two of the same plants and just repeated them all over the piece. I guess he must have just got inspiration from a monkey exposition in a zoo and just decided to jazz it up, make it seem like he went to the jungle and found monkeys. I don't know. This man really just wanted to like jazz up his reality. Which made sense, because his actual job was just being a customs officer. And he lived with his mother in Paris, because his father died and he didn't want to leave her a widow. And he had a wife. You know, his life was kind of boring and painting kind of just allowed him to escape his reality. That's what I kind of liked about him. He used art as a passion, as an escape. And that's what art should be, something we should enjoy. And that just concludes a little presentation about this French painter. Thank you.